Hey everyone and welcome to week three of our Forgiving What You Can't Forget online Bible study. My name is Kendra and you have seen Melissa in this seat for the past two weeks, but I have the opportunity of being with Lisa who is the author for the next four weeks. So we get to hear some wisdom and it'll be a really fun time. So Lisa, how are you doing? Week three. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. This has been yeah. such a joy. It's, I'm just really grateful to be with you. Oh, well, thank you, Lisa. So last week I got to see the video that you and Melissa made and you talked a lot about counseling. And so I would love to know if somebody is considering going to counseling, what would you say to that person? Okay, well, first of all, there's some tremendous resources online because the number one question seems to be if you get to the point where you're like, okay, I want a counselor. And I certainly recommend someone who's gonna be a Christian counselor but then how do I find the right counselor? Yes. And so there's some really good resources online. Um, AACC, which stands for um, the American Association of Christian Counselors. They have wonderful resources that you can look up their website and find a good counselor in your area. Um, also Focus on the Family has wonderful resources. You can even call and talk to someone there or go on their website and see their recommendations as well. But um, if there's a specific issue that you're looking for, if there's trauma that you need to deal with, or if there is um, a sexual addiction, or if there are you know, chemical dependency issues or addiction issues or whatever, you really wanna find someone who is specially trained in those specific areas. And so look at their qualifications, do the research. And certainly with COVID, yeah. there are so many options to do counseling sessions via Zoom. And yes. I was a big skeptic of this, <laughs> I'll be honest, because A, I'm tired of Zoom meetings, and right. B, I just thought, is this really gonna be effective? But um, you know, during certain pockets of time during this COVID thing, um, we have done, um, the Zoom counseling yeah. calls and it's been great. And, and so there really wasn't that barrier of coldness that I wondered would be there. So right. with that being an option, there are Christian counselors available all over. My number one recommendation though is make sure it's a Christian counselor specifically trained in the area that you have identified you need help with. That's great, Lisa, thank you for that. And I know you mentioned you and Art went to counseling together sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. And you both had a revelation in counseling and it had to do with shame scripts. And so I would love for this video for you to talk about what shame scripts are and what that means for everyone. Yeah, so we did these individually, but then it helped as we you know, came back together and had conversations, um, but I, I really think that this was probably one of the most important activities that I did with my counselor, just for me personally. Um, and it's this activity called a trauma egg. Now, when you hear that, you're probably thinking, <laughs> what in the world is a trauma egg, I right? <laughs> okay, so what he had me do is I got a big piece of poster board and then I drew a very large egg shape on there. There it is. Yep. And then divided up the egg into little compartments, um, little squares. And inside the squares, he asked me to draw a stick figure picture um, of anything traumatic that I'd been through from my earliest memories in childhood. So was there any significant um, abandonment, abuse, um, that's sexually, physically, or emotionally, um, anything that registered as a memory that when I think about it, kind of evokes that, that sense of like, oh, that was really hard, you know? So I drew those stick figure pictures in the individual compartments and filled up the whole trauma egg because it was from my earliest memory yeah. in childhood all the way through my elementary years, middle school, oh, wow. middle school. You really had, had to go back. Yeah, huh? middle school had a lot of... <laughs> I think a lot of us can relate. Rejection, <laughs> hurt, trauma, you know, yes. all of the stuff. Um, all into high school, college, young adult years, and then, you know, all the way up to present day. And so, and at first, I'll just be honest, I was probably having some of those thoughts you might be thinking, like, really? <laughs> Like this is going to be helpful to right. sit Especially down like and stick figures. Yeah, so you're like okay. draw. <laughs> like I can't draw, and but it really was incredibly helpful because the point wasn't what I drew. The point was after I finished the poster board, 
My counselor wanted me to stand in front of him. And as I stood in front of him, he wanted me to verbally talk about all the different compartments in the trauma egg. And as I did that, what he was listening for was a common thread of some kind of script that I have um, had some significant common occurrence happen and I developed this wrong perception or this wrong belief about either myself, other people, or God. And it, it, I call it my shame script. Mm -hmm. And what emerged when I did that is um, this thought of Lisa, don't ask other people for things or don't depend on other people for things because they're just gonna disappoint you. And the script that I'll often say in the back of my head, and I can still, hear myself doing it now is, um, you know, don't ask too much of people. Don't be, uh, you know, a pain to other people. Don't be an inconvenience. And so that was really important because I started to recognize that without even knowing it, I sometimes push people away or I don't want other people to do things for me because I always have this little thought, like don't be an inconvenience to someone, don't ask too much. Or if you're asking something from another person, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. So you can see how that would hinder not only my wrong belief about myself, that maybe I'm not worth that, or I just can't count on other people, but it, it led me to a wrong belief about other people. And then even to God, because even in my prayer life, sometimes I would hear myself saying things like, I mean, only if it's your will, you oh, know, yeah, I've or, done that. <laughs> or like, um, but of course you, you know better than me, God, and maybe I shouldn't even ask this of you. And so it's like, I would pray, but then I'd back it all up because I was, I don't know, I guess it's some kind of protection mode yeah. or something. Um, but what's really interesting is if you're in a relationship with someone else and they do this same activity individually, um, a lot of times our conflict in relationships comes from our two shame scripts that we're not even aware of bumping into one another. Interesting. So when Art did it, his shame script was you're not good enough. And so what started happening in our relationship is I would say things like, uh, or he would, he would offer to do something for me. And I'd be like, oh no, 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 I'll do it. Like it's, it's fine because I'm thinking, I don't want to inconvenience you or I don't want to be an inconvenience to you. But then he would hear, oh, she's saying no because I'm not good enough. And so we would have this dialogue with words, but the underlying shame scripts were clashing so much so that that really was causing so much of the hurt mm -hmm. in our relationship that neither of us was even aware of. Yeah. And I could imagine this happening between mother, daughter, between friends, between sisters, coworkers. And so I think it is important for us to identify some of those events that happened and the perceptions we developed that informed the beliefs that we started to carry and wrong beliefs can easily turn into shame scripts. Wow, Lisa. And you have a way of writing that helps people process through things like that. So this week, it's week three and we have chapters five through seven, which are some of my favorite um, uh, chapter titles. So it's collecting the dots, and then connecting the dots and correcting the dots, correct? Yes, and we are just diving right in. Yeah. <laughs> like, we are, you know, and, and it was important to me when I was writing these chapters, not to just give instruction to people, but to really model this and tell more about not only my story, but my mom's story and help people see not just like, hey, you need to go out and think about your story and then collect the dots, connect the dots. Like where does this event tie to this perception that then feeds a wrong belief and, and sometimes even all the way to a wrong identity that we carry about ourselves. So I didn't wanna just instruct people how to do that. I really wanted to model it. And so, yeah. This is a week we're gonna gear up for it's, it, everyone. It is a week <laughs> that we are gonna dive right in. And, and hopefully by me sharing my story, it will e 
evoke or stir up some of your own memories? I don't know, when you were reading those chapters, did you start to go, oh wait, actually this is bringing up memories that I probably haven't even oh, yeah. had top of mind for a while. Because I liked, I'm the kind of person where I don't, if it's out of sight, out of mind, I don't deal with it. And so you have a very nice way of reading through your books of gently uncovering those things and just being aware of it, which then helps to leading to healing and processing and all those things. Yeah, yeah, and processing, is one of the most important things that I want to start pe start to get people in the habit of, or in you know just bringing it to top of mind because I think in our normal busy schedules when we're doing work assignments and we're having conversations about current day events, we don't realize that so much about what we're dealing with in our present is informed by what we experienced in our past. And if we don't properly process and really start to correct some of those wrong perceptions, feeding wrong beliefs, even though it's stuff that happened in the past, it is being pulled right up into the present when we're having conflict with one another. And, and I've often said so much about what makes forgiving someone today seems so hard is unhealed pain from our past. And Lisa, I've heard you say a few times just throughout this whole process that what we're doing is hard and holy work. And so I think we're experiencing that this week. Yes, we are. And and so many times I'll, I'll hear people say, and I used to say this, like, I, I just wanna get better in the present. I don't think there's any need to dig up stuff in the past, but because of what happened in our past affecting our very present day realities, um, it's not wasted time, it's not wasted emotion, and um, it is, it's good work. And anytime we're dealing with not only our emotional health, but our spiritual health, which, which forgiveness holds hands in both. Yes. It makes us more spiritually healthy and emotionally healthy. Um, and allow ourselves to go through the process of healing. It is, it is hard work, but it is good holy work and it will lead to health. And so, yeah, I'm thankful that we have this opportunity. Yes, all right, everyone. Well, let's get on to week three. We look forward to studying right alongside you. And we have a saying here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. We've said it before and we will continue to say it because we believe it to, to be true. When you know, know the, the truth, truth and, and live the truth, it changes everything. everything. Bye everybody. <laughs>